In this Lackey CCG tutorial, I'll show you how to play a game. I'll assume you've watched the previous tutorials and you know how to create a deck, join the game matching server, and host or join a game. In this tutorial, I'll pretty much show you everything else. The game tutorial is separated into three subsections, so it is continued in two more videos. During the course of this tutorial, I want you to remember two things. First, all game plugins are different, so everything I say in this tutorial might be a little different with each game plugin. Some things might be labeled differently, some things might be in different places, and some things I say might be completely not applicable to your game plugin. So try to watch this tutorial with that in mind, and I'll try to be general when I describe things. Secondly, I want you to remember that there's a lot of different ways to do anything. If you don't like one particular way of doing something, there's probably a way that you do like. For example, consider a simple thing like drawing a card. There's probably over 20 different ways to do that in Maki. For example, you could click the button below the table, you could right-click the table and use the pop-up menu, you could use a log command like slash d, you could use a canned message like slash d set as a canned message, and now there's a canned message hitting it. Uh, you could drag a card from the deck. You could uh, right click the deck and draw a card that way. You, you could drag a card from the deck list to your hand. You could drag a card from the deck list to your hand tab. You could use a uh, a keybind that is default. You could use a custom keybind. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do a simple thing like drawing a card. So if you don't like one way of doing anything in general, there's probably uh, another way that you like a lot better. Okay, with the in introduction done, let's start the tutorial for how to play a game. The first thing I'll show you is the layout of the window. Just like all the other windows, we have the main menu and the uh, tabs corresponding to the different panels. When you're playing a game, you're generally going to be in the game panel. The game uh, main menu has a bunch of different options, uh, like making a new game, uh, loading a, a saved game, saving a game, uh, loading an auto-saved game. Between each uh, phase of the turn and each turn, uh, Lackey automatically saves the game, and you can revert to that. You can toggle full screen. You can clear the log, clear the table. You can uh, choose a uh, toggle between hidden mode, where everything that you do is hidden from all players. You can take a screenshot or browse your screenshots, add a seat, remove a seat, and there's a bunch of different options. The iPad interface has one additional element. Below the main window that all Lackey has, the iPad has ways to control how the touch input is interpreted. The first uh, button allows you to make your touch be a passive mouse over and not affect anything. The left click mode allows your touch to act like a left click of a mouse. The right click mode allows your, right, uh, allows your touch to act like a right click, and the middle click allows your touch to act like a middle click. And also, there is an escape button uh, that works very much like the escape key on your keyboard. And only the iPad has this section down here. The game panel is separated into three main columns. There's this column on the left, there's this column in the middle, and it's concealed by default, but you can toggle the visibility on it. There's another column over here. First, I'm going to talk about the column on the left. At the very top left is the card image preview, and below that is the game stats. The first section is global stats. Not all games have global stats, but uh, a global stat is something that is not specific to one player, and it's a stat shared by all players. For example, a game might have a global stat that is the number of days until Armageddon. And all together, everyone would be using that one stat. To alter a stat, you can, while your cursor is over the button, you can use the up and down arrow keys. You can left click it to pop up a dialog. 
and there's a bunch of different ways you can modify the stat that way. Below the global stats are player information. You see a, a box, and each box it corresponds to a different player. Each box has a name at the top for that player, as well as their avatar. You can see I haven't said my avatar yet, but that's where the image would go. And there's also a turn indicator. Whose ever turn it is has this little arrow button. And if you press it, it toggles, it advances the turn to the next player. You can double click each panel here and it collapses it if you uh, want it to take up less space or you can expand it to uh, see more information. Uh, just like you could alter the global stats, you can also alter player stats. Uh, each player stat is listed for each player. There's uh, one copy here for this player, there's one copy here for this player, and, and so forth. You can modify it in the same ways as you could modify the global stats. Uh, and at the bottom of the uh, player panel is a tab corresponding to each of the zones. For example, the hand, the deck, the discard pile, and so on. And you can see the information of the corresponding zone, like the number of cards in that zone, and also the visibility. The blue eyes means it is visible to that zone's owner. Red eyes means it's visible to people who aren't that zone's owner. So, for example, the hand is visible only to its owner, so it's blue eyes. The discard pile is visible both to its owner and to people who aren't its owner, so blue and red. And the deck is not visible to either player, so it doesn't have any visibility eyes at the bottom of it. If you are playing as a, a member in a solitaire game where you play against the test dummy, which is a, a good way to goldfish decks if you want to test them that way, you can have the test dummy be controlled by you if you click on them. So right now I'm, being, uh, I'm acting as if I'm a test dummy, and then I click on myself again, and now I'm acting as if I'm the, my, the, the player. So that's how you can toggle control with solitaire mode. Uh, there's also a bunch of options if you right-click uh, anywhere that's not one of the other buttons or tabs. And you can do things like load a deck right from here. You can load a deck to a different player. Uh, so if you're playing, if you connect to someone and they don't have a deck, you can load a deck directly to them. You can uh, modify all of the different stats here as well. You can add, subtract, set. You can uh, edit your profile here. You can remove the seat. You can stand up and become a spectator. Uh, and you can also collapse and expand through that as well. Below the player stats section, you have the phase of the turn information. Uh, there's two sets of arrow buttons. The first set uh, advances the turn and goes back a turn. The second set advances and goes back the phase of the turns. And you'll notice that some game plugins have pictures and even sounds that correspond to the different phases of the turn. And you'll see those update. Uh, also, there's buttons for the phases of the turn, so you can go directly to a specific phase. You don't need to step through all of them. And that is the first column. And remember, there's three columns, and you can resize them as you will. You can make this area smaller, and if, it's, if the card image is larger than the size you allot to it, when you mouse over it, it expands, so you can see the full size. And that's true whether you mouse over the card image anywhere else. So if you want to re really shrink the amount of space allotted to that column, you can, and you'll still be able to see the full information. Or you can make it as big as you want. This tutorial video is already getting a little long, so in the next part, I will cover the second column of the game window, which has the game table, as well as the different game zones, as well as the chat log and the other functions. And in the final tutorial, I'll talk about the third column, which has uh, a bunch of other functions like uh, tokens and sound share, and I'll talk about that later.